Well, good morning. Good morning. Everybody doing good? Have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. I noticed a couple of you guys look like you gained a couple of pounds, but I'm just saying. Don, I wasn't talking about you. It's all right. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're spending your Sunday worshiping with us at Wiley Methodist Church on this uh, first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? It's just like, man, this year just flying by, flying by. If you are visiting with us this morning, and we are especially glad that you are here, uh, we've got a, a blue card in the seat pocket in front of you, and would love for you to register your attendance with us. Um, it, you're not required to do that, but we would like to know that you are here, if you don't mind us knowing that. Uh, if also, if you'd like to be added to our email list, you can put your email there and check the box, and we will, we will add your, your name there. I want to remind you, out on the welcome tables... There are some little cards that, are, that tell a little bit about our church and um, tell when our service is. What a great time of year to invite folks that you work with, neighbors, whatever, that don't have a church home. A great opportunity. Give them one of these cards and invite them to church and, and uh, would love for you to, to do that. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, always, I don't know, there's something inside of me that, um, that always is stirred on, on Advent Sundays when this morning uh, Jim and Kay McDonald came and, and read our, our uh, passage, our Advent passage. And there's something that stirs in me when I hear that story of the birth of Jesus. Isn't, there, isn't that just something in us that, that stirred? And we're going we're gonna to read Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The genealogy, the re a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers, and we're going to skip all of, the, all of the rest of those. There's a whole bunch of people in the line there. We're in verse 16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile uh, to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word, the gift of your son Jesus. We pray now that you would send your Holy Spirit on us as we, as we sing Welcome Holy Spirit, as we sing that song, God, we, we are not just inviting you to be here in this room, but we are inviting you to be stirred in us. So come and speak in power and authority in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm starting this morning a, a, a new Advent series for the next four weeks. Uh, the series topic will be the prophetic Jesus. Now, that's probably a strange title, prophetic Jesus, but uh, today's 
uh, message is entitled, The Promised One. Promised One. You know, there are, um, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of Old Testament prophecies that were written down uh, some 700 plus years before the birth of Christ that we're going to be kind of walking through some of these the next, uh, the next today and the next three weeks. You know, if I were to tell you, would it, would it impress you if I were to say that, that I'm going to have a grandson that would be born in f- somewhere around April and his name is going to be Daniel and he's going to have his, father's, his grandfather's good, not his father's, where's Ryan at? His grandfather's good looks. Would that impress you? Uh, see, I, but that's, that's a future event, right? That's a future event. It's going to happen sometime in April, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, but I've kind of had some assistance in making that prophetic pronouncement this morning. You know, doctors have done uh, sonograms and blood work and, and all those things. You know, back, back in our day when we had kids... You know, they could kind of look at the sonogram and they could kind of go, eh, I think that one. You know, nowadays with a blood with blood test, they can tell male or female. Isn't that amazing? Uh, maybe you're not as amazed as I am. <laughs> but what I, I want us to, to understand that it would be as if something that something major and dramatic that happens today, if it had been proclaimed, say, around the year 1300. That's what we're in, 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 in. There were dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of, of proclamations that were made in around the year 1300 and predicting something that happened today. Do we understand the magnitude? I mean, we, think, we say that so casually that, oh, yeah, there's, there's hundreds of prophecies that, that proclaim uh, the birth of Christ and all these and specific things that Jesus, there's no way that he or his followers could have manipulated some of these things. To, uh, to come true. So we're going we're gonna to walk through some of these things. Today, that message is the promised one. The prophets promised that Jesus would be born of a virgin and would be God with us. That, that, and that each one of these points as I make these today, I want you to, the scriptures, I've put there in your notes. I started with the Old Testament prophecy and and then the New Testament fulfillment of that prophecy. So uh, in Isaiah 7.14, Isaiah, this, we know that somewhere 700 plus years before the birth of Christ, this is what the prophet Isaiah was given by the Lord to say. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now, that, again... That was some 700 plus years before Jesus was born that he proclaimed that, 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 well, virgins don't give birth that often. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> noticed that, but, but it's typically when you give birth, you're, you're not a virgin. I'm just, I'm, that's for some of the slower ones in the crowd. I wanted to kind of, you know, point that out. This was a major thing for, for Isaiah to proclaim that a virgin will give birth and he will be called Emmanuel. And then in Matthew, the passage we just read, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So God came to us. So many other, we, um, you know, one of, well, it's not, it's, it's one of the major things that separates Christianity from all other faiths is, is that all other faiths are pointing you up how we can, we can reach to God. But in Christianity, it's not about reaching to God. It's about God reaching down to us. Do we understand that? That God came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. This is significant. This is significant. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Secondly, the prophets promised that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem and kings would come to worship him. He would be born in Bethlehem, a very specific proclamation that he, where he would be born. Micah, again, written hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, 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 
Rep. George, you don't not going to deduct because I didn't pronounce that right, are you? My DS is here this morning, so uh, he's uh, you know anyway. That's that's a point. Is that a negative point? <laughs> You're not going to point me somewhere else, are you? These you know anyway. <laughs> Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for, come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Now, we understand, especially if you read the first chapter of John, you understand that we, we can't fully wrap our, our logical minds around this, but Jesus uh, was from the very beginning. Jesus is God. Jesus is fully man. Jesus is fully God. He, he was from the very beginning at John, read chapter 1 of John. It talks about Jesus being uh, with God in the very beginning, that he was God, that he created. And so we see that this, this uh, prophecy from Micah, that he, his origins are from old, from ancient times, and he would be born, he would, he would become flesh, Emmanuel, in, in the town of Bethlehem. Psalm 72, we hear, the kings of Tarshish and, Tarshish and, the, the, uh, and of distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present him gifts. And we understand also from, from Matthew chapter 2. I'll just read it for you, what, uh, the second chapter of the passage we read today. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, there it is, fulfillment of the prophecy. I'm not even too sure... You know, when, when they were proclaiming all of this, that they were really sure that, that they were actually affirming all of these prophetic writings that, as they wrote the New Testament. He was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. It, there's this... this uh, prophetic statement that he will be born in Bethlehem and kings will come to worship him. What happened? He was born in Bethlehem and kings came to worship him. One of the things uh, that I find it interesting that these kings were, were uh, you know, royalty. The, we, don't, we don't know exactly, you know, who they were, but we know that uh, some general things about them, that they were people of high sta uh, status in the world. And yet these people of high status came and they bowed down and they worshiped him and they brought gifts. This is not a sermon on, on stewardship, but I think you find it interesting that their, their natural reaction was to worship and to bring gifts to this king of kings that had been born to them. So the prophets promised that he would be born in Bethlehem and kings would come and worship him. And, and then thirdly, the prophets promised that Jesus would fulfill the covenant made to Abraham. Okay, and uh, you, there's a whole lot in Genesis chapter 12, chapter 17. You can read all about uh, the covenant that God made with Abraham, but I'm, I've got a couple of verses there for us. Uh, when Abraham... At that time, he was Abram. God later changed his name to Abraham. He was 75 years old, 2,000 years before Christ. 2,000 years before Christ, uh, God made this covenant with Abraham. And it said, the Lord said to Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. All people on earth will be blessed through you. Who do you think that was pointing to? Is anybody out there? All nations will be blessed through you. We understand through this, if you follow this lineage that I skipped over a bunch of, we understand that, that, that Jesus came through the lineage of Abraham. And then some 24 years later, when Abram was 99 years old, God reestablished and reaffirmed his covenant. He says in Genesis 17, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant. It's not this covenant that somehow can ebb and flow with, with whatever's going on and it will come and go. No, he says, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me, meaning God, and between you, meaning Abraham, and your descendants after you, meaning us. And for generations to come to be, and so the covenant was to be your God 
and the God of the, your descendants after you. Now, I don't think we have any, any people of Jewish uh, lineage in our church. We may. If you, do, if you are, that would be interesting for me to know. But we understand, look, listen to Galatians 3. We understand that through Christ, we have been adopted into that covenant, into the family of God. You are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, so there's a lot there to unpack for a second. So if, if we are clothed in Christ, if we have been baptized in Christ, then we are heirs. What happens when uh, someone in your, your family passes away and you begin to settle their estate? The heirs uh, are the beneficiaries of the stuff, right? Whatever, whatever that, the, the person who, who has passed away, has, whatever is in their estate that they have left, the heirs inherit that. They, it, it's theirs now. And so, so what God is saying is that through Christ, if we have been baptized in Christ, if we have clothed ourselves in Christ, then we belong to Christ and we are heirs according to the promise. So we have inherited the promise. What is the promise? That God will be our God and we will be his people. That's the promise. And that, that all nations will be blessed through him. So, so I've walked, this is, I mean, I'm just scratching the surface of these Old Testament prophecies that were spoken hundreds of years before Christ. And, and today we've learned that, that he was, it was prophesied, prophesied that he would be a, uh, born of the virgin, that he, would, uh, that he would be Emmanuel, God with us, that he would be born in Beth, Bethlehem, that kings would come and worship him, and that we through him would, would uh, inherit this covenant. So what, why is that important? Why is that important, church, to us? Well, because it, it confirms that Jesus is who he said he is. He is the Christ. He is the promised one that God sent him. He said he would send him, and he did. And he didn't just send him for the, the world. He sent him for you and for, I, for myself. He is Emmanuel, God with us. I, you know... Um, I'll tell you when this becomes important. It's important every day, every moment. But when we face trials and crisis in our lives, you know, I, I did a funeral a while back, and I wasn't, you know, you do those, sometimes you do those funerals that uh, the funeral home will call pastors a lot of times and say, hey, you know, this family doesn't have a pastor, they don't have a church home, would you do the funeral? And I do several of those. And um, I did one for this family not long ago. And, man, it's, it's just really evident to me that I'm not sure Jesus was anywhere in the picture for any, anybody. And so those are hard to do, aren't they, George? Marv? <laughs> Jim? Those are hard to do. Alan? People who've preached those kinds of, kinds of funerals. And, you know... I always just share the hope we have in Christ. And I, and I, and I, and I was speaking to this, this family and these friends who, uh, I mean, in all honesty, uh, I, I'm just not sure Jesus was, was a part of any of it. And, and, I, and I stood up there, and the first thing I said was, I'm here today, and I only have one thing to offer you, hope. And, and, and hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And, and when, when we don't have anywhere else to turn, we have Jesus. God made flesh. God Emmanuel. That is significant. You know, we, we, we recite these, these prophecies and, and we kinda, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other and we don't really think that much of it. But when I'm telling you, when, when the doctor says it's cancer, we need hope. 
When a spouse says, I don't love you anymore, we need hope. When a boss says, can't use you anymore, we need hope. When a loved one says, I'll never speak to you again, we need hope. We need Jesus. We need the promised one. God, Emmanuel, God made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. God that we could touch. God that became one of us. He is with us. And that's, the, that's what we celebrate this, this Advent season. You know, I, I, I get caught up in it too. You know, we, all this Black Friday stuff and all of this stuff, you know, how, how good a deal can I get on a flat screen and all that kind of stuff. You know, we get into all that. But I'm telling you, this season is about the hope of the promised one. And this life is tough. If I'm the only one that's noticed that, something's wrong. I know I'm not. Life is hard. Jesus said, yes, this world you'll have trouble, but I've overcome the world. I'm the promised one. I am Emmanuel. I am God made, made flesh. And we have hope because of him. If you'll bow your heads with me. Father, I, I'm just so so thankful for Jesus. I'm to say that, that name. There's just a beautiful name, Jesus. Jesus. You are the one that was promised. And you're, God, you are always good for your promises. Stir our hearts, oh God. If we, don't, if we don't know you, or if you want us to know you better and deeper in a more intimate way, then, then stir inside of us, oh God. Forgive us for getting caught up in the commercialization of this season, this great season of, that we celebrate your promise. Forgive us. Thank you for sending Jesus. He is our hope. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this, uh, this message from God's Word today. I want to remind you that you have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, and He came to set you free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He did that by hanging on a cross in our place. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to I invite you to do that today. If you want to do that, just pray this prayer with me. Father, uh, I repent of my sins. I confess to you that I am a sinner. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to free me from my sin, to, to be my Savior and my Lord. Uh, help me to be the creation that you have, have created me to be in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, I want to ask you to do four things. First of all, I want to ask you to, to share that decision with a member of the clergy. Let them know that you've made that decision. And secondly, I want, you, want to ask you to be baptized. God's Word says that uh, believers in Jesus Christ, we affirm that and we celebrate that through baptism. And thirdly, I want to ask you to begin to read God's Word to get into his word, not just because uh, we think that that makes us good, but because this is the word of life. And finally, to, to find a Bible-believing and preaching church to be a part of. If you've made that decision, I also welcome uh, a co conversation with you. You can reach me at jhatcher at wileymethodist.org, and I'd be happy to come along your side in that journey. God bless you.